plaster it with either a lime or an earth plaster, which is also permeable. So then the, the surface, which is going to be in, in the interior, of course, it's, it's your protection against uh, crayons and whatever else is happening inside. On the outside, it's protection against liquid water. Those things have the same permeability to water vapor as the hemcrete itself. So therefore, we're in the inside of the building. Let's say you're in a shower, or let's say that this is the kitchen, and there's water vapor in the air. The wall will take that on and hold it while, uh, until the, the, the interior uh, relative humidity goes down, and then it'll let it back out. So, so we basically are creating a stable interior relative humidity with a passive material, just with a wall material. So that's a huge advantage of, of hemcrete. It's basically, in the simplest way of saying it, it's a healthier wall. So we said it's a longer lasting wall because it uh, deals with water well. It's also a healthier wall because it deals with water well. Another advantage of, of hemcrete is that it's carbon sequestering. You remember before I said that our, our goal is to be carbon neutral. Well, hemcrete actually sequesters carbon. Let me tell you how it does that. First of all, any cellulose material, wood for example, or hemp, takes carbon in during its life cycle. And usually when it decays, it lets it back into the atmosphere. If you take that plant and then put it into a wall, for example, in hemcrete, then that carbon is now sequestered in the wall and not becoming part of climate change. So the hemcrete in this building, this one building alone, will sequester 20,000 pounds of carbon. That's a pretty big accomplishment. And it's all thanks to hemcrete. Hemcrete is part of the natural building world. What are natural materials? They're basically materials that are usually local or site harvested or have low embodied energy like hemcrete does. There are also materials that work well with the site. And one thing that's great about hemcrete is that you can create a strong wall of different thicknesses based on what your insulation needs are. That's because you use forms around some kind of other structure like wood that will hold up the roof and then you form around that and put the hemcrete in the cavity. So for example, in our house here, the Now House prototype, since we're trying to get to such high energy efficiency levels, we have a 16 inch thick wall to get us uh, a performance rating of R40. We could also do a 10 inch wall. So we have flexibility in terms of the amount of insulation that we, we're gonna use with the exact same procedure for construction. That's fairly unique in the world and it's another reason why hemcrete's a really great product. I'm a doctor. I'm a lawyer. I'm a journalist. I'm a student. I'm a teacher. I'm a representative. I have cancer. The outdated laws of prohibition are more dangerous than the plant itself. I lost my scholarship. I was fired. 20 million arrests since 1965. This is getting ridiculous. Our prisons are overcrowded with nonviolent offenders. We have the opportunity to change. This is costing our country billions of dollars. Making my family and I fight in a courtroom is difficult enough when I'm already fighting through chemotherapy. There's no reason to be scared by tradition anymore. We can stop this. We can stop this. We are the American people. We can stop this. And you have our support. We are old. Young. Straight. Gay. We're every race and nationality. And we're not going to give up. You can tax it. You can regulate it. Apply age restrictions. You can create millions of new jobs. We can save our economy. President Obama. It's time for legalization. Legalization. Yes. We can. <laughs> this has been a public service. <laughs>
the, it's our, it's the Stoner holiday today. It's 420. It's just an opportunity to come outside and publicly speak about uh, what is right and what is wrong. And I think our drug laws are wrong. Um, I say legally. I don't know why it isn't legal. You don't know why it isn't legal? No, it's ridiculous. Legalize it. Completely. Um, no, I don't think we should legalize it. Do you think there's legitimate medical uses for it? Yes, definitely. Um, cataracts. People that are stratus. Asthma. Um, Crohn's disease. Mental problems. Uh, fibromyalgia. Found for medicinal reasons. Do you think there's a medicinal value to it? Yes, I do. Uh, I think it should be medically acceptable. Do you think there's medicinal benefit to it? Uh, not really. I guess there could be. Uh... Legalized pot today. Um, as a co-chair of Philly Normal, uh, we've been working a lot to educate the public about the truth about marijuana, and we're giving them a catalyst to uh, tell the elected officials uh, how or what to do about it, to legalize it, to regulate like alcohol, take it off the streets, take it out of the hands of criminals. Why do you think so many people don't want to legalize it? Because they, they can't make no money off of it. Yeah. That's why. That's what I think, because the government can't make no money off of it. So you'll make all the money. It's been illegal since the beginning. It's an illegal substance. They're going to keep it illegal, and then the old till you guys get old enough to make the changes, <laughs> that isn't going to change. Back in World War II, the U.S. government actually forced people to grow a million acres of marijuana for the war effort. We won World War II with marijuana. I had to quit smoking pop because of this job, and I drink a lot more alcohol. It's a lot more dangerous. More car crashes, you know, due to alcohol, I think, than anything else. Fun <laughs> fact, the U.S. Constitution was originally written on pure marijuana. It's time that the young people stood up like you guys are doing right now. Be loud. Be heard. And reform the laws. It's the only way you're going to do it. Free speech. That's what this is. It's a free speech zone right here, right? Yep. Someone else is judging you. How many people were registered to vote? Would it sway how you voted in a political election? Uh, no, I don't think it would, no. Well, obviously, you probably feel about it strong enough that it would sway how you vote in a political election. Certainly, election. certainly would, and it showed everyone. Do you feel strongly enough about the legalization of marijuana that it would sway how you would vote in a political election? Uh, I don't know. Every year I run for political office. This year I'm running for state senate, for uh, U.S. Congress in the 3rd District, and Burlington County Freeholder, all under the legalized marijuana party. And again, this isn't this is a way of protesting. You know, I totally believe that uh, marijuana should be legal. Uh, by running under under the legalized marijuana party, as open you know, being as open as possible as I can about it. And, hey, there are a lot of people who just don't agree with the, with the Democrats and Republicans. Don't vote for them, but they will not vote for me. I guess. 12,000 something votes last year when I ran for Senate. You think it should be outlawed? Absolutely. It's as bad a drug as, say, cocaine or heroin or. You don't? Here we are gathered here on 420, April 20th, the most reverend of stone holidays. Today we're going to pray that the government ends their oppressive persecution of us. We're going to pray that they end the war on us. Well, I know that when I was in the military, the fellows smoked it and went out of their heads and got killed there. In addition to ending the war in Iraq. I didn't need to light that in the ground, so. Yeah, that's all right. It doesn't matter which guy. I'm not even going to bring up a particular guy. Or you can have no guy. But we're still going to pray. We're going to pray that the war ends. They stop persecuting us and arresting us. I've been in prison for smoking this. No one should go to prison for smoking marijuana. No one should have their kids taken. No one should have their <coughs> jobs lost. No. This is a pretty good butt. <laughs>